It was in the 1970s that the Department of Defense first started funding brain-computer interface research. Department of Defense first started funding. Department of Defense first started funding. We have made so many advancements in technology as the human race, but just like the 0.1% of bacteria still left by surface cleaners, it's still not good enough that we're still having to press buttons on our devices. Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> Alright, mind reading, controlling things with your brain, downloading and uploading things into your brain. This was all science fiction and conspiracy. Until two days ago that is, when Elon Musk unveiled what they're now able to do at Neuralink. I bet you wish you listened to the conspiracies now, huh? Alright, Elon Musk, the guy who brought us SpaceX, Tesla car, Smoking marijuana with Joe Rogan has now unfailed phase one of the Neuralink. So testing has been successful on animals and will be ready for human testing next year. This is a type of tech called the Brain Computer Interface or BCI, which is where the computer can take information directly from the brain and turn that into action without you having to do anything. This is next level laziness. I can only imagine what's going to happen to obesity. We're probably going to be crushed under its weight. Of course, this tech is not new. It's been around for quite some time, but Neuralink is just doing it better. I mean, it's 10,000 times more powerful than what's out there at the moment. It's been presented to us one way or another for years. So we're more receptive to the idea. How, I hear you ask? Through entertainment, Iron Man, Robocop and Justice League. Through people that we, unfortunately, take as idols. Bribery, yeah. The benefits are sold to us. Hey, you don't have to type emails. You think it and it's done. You don't have to open the door. You just think it and it's done. You don't have to kill someone, you just think it and it... Wait a minute. And if that doesn't work, then we're emotionally guilted into it by showing how it can help the disabled. Don't you want a disabled person to walk again? So what is it? At this early stage, it's technology that helps you control things like your keyboard, so for example, you think of words, yeah? And the computer just types it, yeah? So it controls things like your keyboard, your mouse, or even later your prosthetic limbs. All with your thoughts. Imagine calling tech support. Yeah, Ranjeev. Yeah, I just killed everybody on my street. Accidentally, of course. How do I undo that? I, I can't seem to find that option in my chip. Yeah, Rangeef, I can't seem to find my chip, mate. I think it fell in the toilet. Is it waterproof? Do I get a refund? Alright, mate. So how does it work? Quite simply, our brain is made up of cells called neurons. These neurons fire when they receive an electrical signal. As they do this, a small electromagnetic field is present. So the nutters at Neuralink are able to stick her electrode and read these fields and translate them into computer code. I can't believe I'm saying it like it's normal. So how does it happen? So they stick hundreds of tiny hairs into your brain using technology which is very quick, avoids brain vessels and doesn't require you to have major surgery or stitches. I'm hairy enough as it is yeah. I don't want hairs being lodged in my brain as well now mate. What is wrong with it? Well, number one, control. Humans haven't been easy to control because we all have different ways of thinking. Computers on the other hand are much easier. You just add the code and boom, it does exactly what it's told. So to allow the possibility of anyone to get into your brain doesn't seem like the wisest of ideas considering 
that's pretty much the only kind of privacy we've got left. And eventually according to Ray Kurzweil, everyone's gonna be hooked up to what's known as the cloud. And the question is, who'll control the cloud? It's naturally going to be the people in power or AI. Number two, less human. In the quest of making us superhuman, we're becoming less human. In fact, it's our humanity which has restricted the threat that we pose to each other. With superhumans led by super overlords and AIs, the consequence of things going wrong will be much more greater. Number three, trust. The government lies. AI can't be controlled. So to give such control to something unreliable like AI or to give control to pathological liars like the government is stupidity in its purest form mate. It's more stupid than giving a hammer to a guy that's trying to mug you. Alright guys so I mean what is right with this yeah? Of course there is one major advantage. Elon Musk has been saying for a long time that AI and the development of AI should be controlled, especially the singularity which is where machine intelligence will surpass human intelligence and just take a form of its own. So Elon has now understood that he can't stop this no matter what. This is his attempt to kind of curtail and control that. I mean we'll not be able to beat um, AI for so then if you know as the saying goes if you can't beat him join him kind of thing. But anyways guys, what do you guys think? Is it a yay or a nay? Is there stuff that I've missed out? Let me know and until next time guys. Yeah, Ranjeef, do I get a refund? Asalaamu Alaikum.